thank you for joining me today on Movement Matters. I'm your host, Christine Linders, physical therapist and board certified orthopedic clinical specialist. Today, I have an excellent show for you to help resolve your knee pain. In 10 short videos, I'll explain how to use proper knee mechanics to rescue your knee, as well as self-treatments to decrease pain immediately. But first, I want to share something with you about myself. I don't know for those of you watching who know much about me, I don't think I talk about it very much, but I am one of the most injured people that I know. <laughs> and I think uh, over the years, it was a little bit of a curse because I love sports so much and it has stopped me from doing the things I loved over and over again in high school, in college, when I was playing college volleyball. And then I ran track at the end of my college year when I couldn't play volleyball anymore. And then into my post-college years where I was doing triathlons, playing Gaelic football, surfing, and all the other sports that I loved, I kept getting sidelined from one injury or another. So I've had five shoulder surgeries. I grew really fast as a young girl. I had my first one at 18. I had my fifth one two years ago. And as you can see, I'm a little bit injured now from working because of the damage I've had to my arm. I've had a knee surgery, I've sprained ankles, I had two car accidents where I have a, a shift in my neck, and I also herniated two discs in my back from helping a patient uh, probably about five or six years ago who was having trouble up in a chair. So I assisted him uh, at the request of the nurse to get back to bed and, um, and hurt myself in the process. So I am very familiar with injuries, and I think what used to be a curse to me of all these injuries and stopping me from doing what I love the most became a blessing. And I, in a blessing in that by treating myself and experiencing all these injuries, plantar fasciitis, posterior tip tendonitis, foot pain, I have learned and have this internal knowledge of biomechanics that's beyond what I learned in physical therapy school, beyond what I learned in all my further education that I paid for to get my uh, orthopedic certified specialist and my manual therapy certification. So this show I bring to you with my 24 years experience as a physical therapist, my X number of years experience as an injured person to inspire you to try these things and do these things because they work not only on myself and my friends and my family, and my patients, but they're gonna work for you too. And so if I can do it and I can work on my body the way I do with all my different parts that are injured and not perfect to get myself to play beach volleyball and still love it, to go surfing and still love it, to still take a sunrise sand jog once or twice a week and still love it, then you can do it too. So let's talk about the knee. I want to start by helping you learn what can cause wear and tear to your knee that would lead any of us down to an insidious injury to our knee, which means you wake up one day and you have knee pain and you can't really relate it to something you did. Oftentimes that wear and tear is caused by something silly that you don't realize, like you're walking with one foot turned out just a little bit because of an old ankle sprain or hip pain that you had five years ago or an old surgery or bunion surgery that you had. So it also could be because your hip is weak like mine was after I herniated, the, herniated those discs and I'm walking around New York City not realizing I have a weak leg until I tried to stand and balance to show a patient an exercise and I was all over the place and I thought, oh my gosh, wow, I'm gonna hurt myself and I did. I hurt my foot actually from that. So let's go to video one and two where you can learn more about some of the things that can lead you to wear and tear in your knee. Wear and tear from abnormal movement at your knee that happens when say your foot is out or your foot is pronating too much or the hip muscle isn't strong enough to control the rotational movement at your thigh bone, your femur, is a very common way that you can get degenerative conditions of the knee, degenerative arthritis and meniscal wear and tears that happen in these structures right here. These are the meniscus. This is your patella tendon. A lot of people get pain in the patella tendon if their foot is turned out or if they don't have the hip stability when they're landing from a jump, say playing beach volleyball, playing basketball, even running or hiking. If we take this off, you see this is the front of your knee. Your kneecap sits right here. These are the meniscal structures right here called menisci. And so if your leg is rotating down here because your foot is out 
or your hip isn't stabilizing your femur and this is twisting, you get a lot of wear and tear on these and you get degenerative changes of the structures inside your knee. You could also tear these ligaments, which is like the ACL and the PCL. They run in a cross between your leg and that is when something happens like this and the force or the momentum is too much for that ligament to handle and so it tears. The mechanics of your lower leg are so critical to the health and the well-being of your knee. Your pelvis needs to stay level and stable while you're moving on your femur. And if your hip is weak, if this is your pelvis and this is your leg, if your hip is weak and your pelvis is dropping too much, it acts as your femur going in, which causes a bending at your knee, like a sideways bending. I don't know if you've ever seen people walking with a crooked knee. It kind of looks like this as they're walking. It's so important to make sure you have the stability of your hip and of your pelvis so that your knee doesn't get a little bit more of abnormal wear and tear with each step you take, even if you're just walking around your block, not including running, jumping, or repetitive activities like that. Also, the position of the foot that I mentioned is really important because if your foot and the arch, if your foot or the arch is dropping down or your foot is turned out causing the arch to be dropping down, your lower leg bone, the tibia, will roll in as well. And that takes your knee with it. So let's go to video number three, which will give you a better picture of what I'm talking about. The hip and the foot play a critical role in keeping the knee healthy because this is the femur bone. And so if you get too much rotation in the femur here because your hip muscle isn't strong enough, it will cause a rotational movement like this at your knee, a twisting, and that's what leads to wear and tear. Same thing happens in your foot. If your foot is turned out or you're over pronating, your arch is collapsing too much, that causes a rotational movement at this bone below. So where this one was moving before, now this one is moving and ultimately it causes a twisting at your knee, leads to wear and tear, meniscal damage and arthritis. So this weekend, uh, I went up with my Friday night surf club to go to Chun's Beach for a little Chun day, fun day. And so my friend Laura is, uh, I play beach volleyball with her, but we also surf with her. She is gonna be having knee surgery in a few weeks. And I wanted to take a quick video of her before she has surgery to see if she had any nuance motions that we needed to take care of before she went into surgery because she's got something that needs to be repaired in her knee and I wanted to know she didn't remember an injury so I wanted to know what led her to that was her foot unstable was her hip unstable what movement patterns did she have that, that she needs to change that caused that wear and tear at her knee so I was able to take a video of Laura so let's look at video number four this is her on her good leg if you could play that one more time and you could see how her her trunk she's a little wobbly because we were on the dirt but her trunk is pretty straight in line over her knee let's play that same video again uh, yeah. now let's go to video five where you can see that her trunk is shifting over to the outside of her knee as she squats kind of see it right away how her shoulder just kind of drifts a little bit to the right over that leg and she's more wobbly and there's a strained movement. Let's play that one more time so you can see how her shoulders shift over that hip. So that's important to see because that's not that much of a motion change. That's not that big of a deal to notice, you would think. However, when your trunk leans over your leg like that, it shuts down your gluteus medius. And that's a muscle that I'm gonna show you how to strengthen towards the end of the show today. That muscle helps to stabilize your femur, your thigh bone, on your pelvis when you're standing when you're squatting. And if you don't have the control of all of your hip rotators, but most importantly, the gluteus medius, you'll start getting other problems. You can get um, IT band syndrome, which is either a pain at your outside of your hip or a pain at the outside of your knee or down your leg. You can get uh, patella tendonitis. You can get meniscal wear and tear. You can get back pain on that side. You can get hip pain out of that side. There's so many things that can go wrong if your gluteus medius is not stabilizing you 
there. And also you can get sciatica or the piriformis syndrome that people talk about, which is when your gluteus medius doesn't do its job to stabilize your leg on your pelvis, the piriformis muscle, which is also an abductor, mostly a rotator though, it has to work harder to stabilize you. So runners often have IT band syndrome and they get that piriformis syndrome from running because their gluteus medius isn't strong enough to stabilize them and their rotator, their piriformis muscle is working harder. So let's look at image number six, which is an image of my mom who I always joke with her about her crooked knee. But what happened with her knee, she did injure her knee when she was young. She fell on, I think, some glass or a pile of rocks. But also the thing that I've been harping on her for 15 years probably is that she walks with her right foot turned out, always. I take videos of her every time I see her. Turn your foot straight, mom. Turn your foot straight, mom. Turn your foot straight when you go up and down the stairs. And she mentions that every time she does turn her foot straight, her knee doesn't hurt when she goes up and down the stairs. And why that happens is like I explained before, if your foot is out, it takes your tibia and puts it in a different position and it twists at your knee because you're going forward. It's a complicated biomechanics, but the important thing to take home is you can even see her foot's turned out just ever so slightly, but look at that bending in her knee. That's that sideways angle I was telling you about, the crooked knee. And she has terrible knee arthritis and knee pain. And of course she does because she's been having abnormal wear and tear that rotational twisting every, every, every step she takes as she goes forward about her day, as she does her gardening, as she walks around an uneven yard. And now let me point out the pelvis. If you can see up at her pelvis, she's got that wrinkle and her shoulders are completely angled down to the leg that she's not standing on. And that is because her gluteus medius on that right side is not stabilizing her pelvis. So not only is her foot out, but her hip is dropping, causing her femur to rotate inward. So her knee is literally getting twisted every step that she takes over and over and over again, leading to that collapse at her knee. So that twisting is just the lower bone going this way and then the upper bone going this way. And so over and over and over again, you're wearing away those meniscal structures that I explained in the first video. You're wearing away at your cartilage and it ends up with osteoarthritis or wear and tear or degenerative joint disease, all those different names. That's what happens. Abnormal movement over time leads to arthritis and wear and tear and damage to your knee. So what do you do? You need to correct those mechanics. You need to work on turning your foot straight. You need to work on strengthening your hip muscle. You need to work on strengthening your knee. So I want to go to video number seven where we could talk a little bit more about alignment. That faulty alignment that we just saw in those two videos where the knee is caving in or the trunk is deviating over indicates that you don't have the proper stability of your leg on your pelvis. And that's what those exercises, those hip exercises will help you with. So to break it down even further, if you're standing here, you have the alignment right here. And when you bend, there should be a relatively straight line right down your body, your hip curves a little bit, straight down your knee. What you saw in one video was the knee going in a little bit like that. So this femur bone is rotating and that's where sometimes the knee gets a screwing mechanism on it and you can get meniscal wear and tear, degenerative joint disease, arthritis. Also, the other thing that was happening in the younger girl's video was she was doing this. So she was compensating for her hip not working to try to help straighten her knee. She's gonna be getting knee surgery in two weeks. I just saw her at the beach after surfing and said, let me look at your leg for this video. But what I had her do was to shift her hips so that she's straight and you're trying to use her hip and all of a sudden she was unstable. So her body was compensating by doing that to get stability. And it was one thing that I wanted to work on with her before surgery, because it's important the movement patterns that you have that are altered, that you fix them as soon as you can. That's a major point that I wanna hammer home is how important it is to have normal mechanics. Turn your foot straight so that it matches your other foot. If you're towed out normally, that's okay, but look down to make sure they're symmetrical. If you have knee pain and you're really towed out normally, turn them both in a little bit to get your glute to fire some more. Now let's go to a question. I have a question from a viewer. Thank you so much for sending this. What's three things I should always keep in mind when I walk to prevent knee pain? And does keeping my back straight when I walk help? 
So three things you should keep in mind when you walk to prevent uh, knee pain are stretch your calves first because most people that I see that have knee pain, foot pain, hip pain, back pain have tight calves. So give your calves a little bit of a stretch. I don't have a video for that, but I do in several other of my shows. So you can go through some of those. And also it's important when you walk to keep your foot straight, look down and see what's happening when you keep your foot straight. Don't walk on angles. So if the road has a tilt, don't walk on the tilt, find the sidewalk that's more even. That's another thing that can strain your knee. If you're going up and down hills, actually down hills, land with soft knees. Don't land with your knees locked. Sit back a little, I call that a hip strategy. It's like if somebody punched you in the stomach, you would stick your butt back, right, to bend at your hip. So bend at your hip to stick your rear back when you're going down a hill. It's like going down a, a conveyor belt, I used to say, so that you use your muscles to absorb the shock and not your knee joint. And the second part of the question is, do keeping my, does keeping my back straight when I walk help? Absolutely. I mean, I'm not sure if straight is a good word, but having proper posture when you walk is excellent. I had a patient of mine who had terrible neck pain wear a posture strap when she walked because she was hunching so much, her neck would bother her all the time. And I thought, will you take these nice long walks? How about you wear this posture strap to take some of the tension off your neck and encourage upright posture while you're walking? And that day she sent me a text message and said her pain was MIA, missing an action that day. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, let me go back to a little bit more of the importance of alignment and subtle nuances. I was talking about turning your foot straight. Let's go to video number eight to learn a little bit more about that. If one of your feet is more abnormally towed out than the other from a foot surgery, ankle sprain, previous hip injury, or other type of surgery, bunion surgery, there's one great way to fix that so you don't continue to injure your knee. If you're walking like this on one foot, it's so easy to fix. Turn it straight. <laughs> I know that sounds silly, but you turn it straight. But now what has to happen is your brain needs to learn how to work with that. So you may have been walking like this and now your knee's hurting because your knee's getting this twisting with every step that you take. And now you turn it straight. You might see that your knee wants to look in like that. And that's because walking this way has shut down the hip muscle. As soon as you turn this in, it gives a rotational stimulus that fires to your brain to tell this muscle to work. But your body doesn't know how to do that anymore because you haven't walked that way in a while. So you turn your foot straight, you focus on doing that when you walk. Then you start focusing on balancing in that one leg and don't let your knee cave in. Imagine like you're pushing your knee just out towards the finger to keep it alignment and you work on holding it there. And then you do all those great hip exercises to support your knee by using your hip. I realize I'm throwing very highly detailed information your way. But the reason I want to do it is because whatever you take home from these videos is going to help your knee. And I think it's something that I go through with my patients all the time in the mirror about look at your kneecap, look at the line of your pelvis to make sure it's here. Look at your shirt wrinkles above to see, is it wrinkled on one side in the video of my mom? Like you could see indicating that your pelvis is not being stable. Look at your kneecaps. Are they both facing forward in the mirror? Or is one turning in like you just saw in me on the previous video? Are your feet symmetrically pointed forward or is one turning out? Is one arch collapsing and you feel like your ankle's unstable? All of those things are important to pay attention to in our own bodies. And it's something that I've done in my own body to help correct all the problems that I've had from being a teenager up until this point. So that is why I throw all this information at you. So let's look at uh, video number nine. Video number nine, I'm gonna show you how to strengthen your hip so that you can stop having these problems at your knee. The best exercises to help restore the alignment that is needed at the knee joint from having proper hip function are these. They're very simple. These are great ones to get you started. So all you need is an exercise band. Number one, put the exercise band around your ankles straighten your legs out you pull your toes up you squeeze your buns and you slide your legs apart you want to press your knee down to tighten your quad muscle too make this muscle bulge out right here press down slide you don't want to lift because i use your hip flexor when you push down you're going to get your gluteus medius which is the muscle that's going to stabilize your leg on your pelvis when you're on one leg walking then you do one leg 
10 to 15 times. Then you repeat with the other leg 10 to 15 times. You can also do it on your side. But when you're doing it on your side, you need to go up and back, not up and forward, because gluteus medius extends and moves to the side. So you want to go up and back. You should feel it not on your hip bone, but just behind your hip bone. You can also do what physical therapists and other professionals call clamshells. But here, you're going to be in, your hip is going to be bent. So you want to do clamshells here, but you can also do them here to work your hip in extension. Also, clamshells on your side are great because you can use gravity. So you bend your hips and knees first, do a clamshell, do it till it burns. Then you straighten your legs. So now you're in a straight line with your knees bent behind you and you clamshell, clamshell, clamshell. All those are a great, great way to start getting your hip to help stabilizing your femur. And then the last one is more functional. You put your feet together and you walk sideways and your knees are a little bit bent and that starts teaching you. You can, you can go a step out, step out. You could step out this way, everything to work your hip muscles so that you can save your knee. Aloha. Okay, excellent. So those are many exercises that will help your knee. There's so many different ones. I can do five shows on it, but I wanted to get you started because these are the things that when I do it with my patients on their initial visit, in addition to me working on their knee, which I'll show you later in the last video, they always come back and say, wow, I feel so much better. I, I don't even know what to do. And another one that I showed them in the, in the first video that I didn't show here because I showed it in a previous uh, show I did um, was to just press the back of your knee down into the surface. So you're laying flat with your legs straight and you just press the back of your knee down to tighten your thigh. That one is a fantastic one and first course of action to get your, to get your knee going when you have pain. Now I've got a question. <clears throat> when my sister does squats, her knees start to hurt a lot the next day. Do you know any alternative to squats? There's many alternatives to squats to get uh, your glutes firing, to get your hamstrings firing, to get your quads firing. And I think the important thing to know is how is she doing squats? Is she doing a squat standing where she's um, letting her knees go in front of her feet. If her low back is rounding when she does squats, that sends the femur bone forward and causes a lot of compression and tension on the front of the knee joint in addition to the patella tendon. So to strengthen your quads, your hamstrings and your glutes, there's many exercises. I just showed you a few for your glutes but a leg press is a great alternative to squats where you're laying on the back if you're gonna use a machine. I'm not sure if she's doing these workouts at home or if she's at a gym. If you're at a gym, doing the leg press is a great alternative to squats because it's taking your body weight off gravity. I like lunges as an alternative to squats, but again, the way I do my lunge is very specific. And when I put myself in a long lunge and I drop the back knee down, I don't lunge forward so my front knee goes over my foot. I'm not sure if this is if this is making sense, but there are many alternatives to squats. I know it's hard to explain them without, without showing a video. So I, I hope that helps a little bit. Um, in the next video, I'll show what you can do. If her knee is hurting after squats, she should really modify her mechanics and how she does the squats. Make sure she's sitting back. Make sure she's not dropping below 90 degrees as well. If you go too low, there's a lot of compression and a lot of stress on the anterior knee joint. So maybe that's part of her problem is she's squatting too low and putting too much stress on her knee or holding too much weight or she's letting her knees dive in together it's important to have your feet right under your hip joint and your hip joint is right in your groin it's not the outside of your hip it's right in your groin so a common mistake is some people put their feet too wide for squats and they squat down and their knees dive in so have her look in a mirror to make sure she has the proper alignment i hope that helps so let's go to video 10, where I show you how to do direct self-treatment, massage your knee, the number one way to make it feel better right away. I get a lot of questions about what to do when you have this crunching, when you bend down, when you squat down, get up and down from a chair, or just move your leg back and forth. And the reason why that is, is that you can have an uneven surface or a roughened surface behind your kneecap, articulating with your femur bone. And one of the great ways to help improve that articulation is to work out the muscles so you have good 
muscle control left to right. So the IT band often gets tight. So I like sports cream, but you can use whatever you want. This has a nice glide. You want to massage this part of your leg out. Really loosen up this band. This band gets often tight when you have a malalignment of your leg, when your hip is not aligned over your knee and over your foot. And I'll explain that a little bit more later. But then you want to massage the outsides of your knee. In and out, massage under your patella tendon here, underneath your kneecap. You don't want to push down on this kneecap part. This can move in and out. But you kind of take your hand and you cup around it and massage over that area and pull up. Massage over that area and pull up because you want to have the normal tissue tension from the outside to the inside of your quads as well as the front quad and oftentimes that just gets overworked and you get an imbalance there so that should help you with the crunching it'll also help you if you have tendonitis pain pain in the front of your knee pain on the sides massage it here massage where your calf muscles come up and they cross your knee joint massage where your hamstrings come down and cross your knee joint stretch your calf all of that can help you with the pain that you're feeling in your knee enjoy I just did this with my mom this weekend. She was having terrible hip pain go up and down the stairs. And I said, mom, sit down. We got on the video. We rubbed out her IT band and her leg. And then she was able to go up and down the stairs much easier. So let's go straight to the last video, which is about what you can do. And you can do it to help yourself, even if you have end stage knee arthritis and you're waiting for a knee replacement. Let's watch this video to learn what you can do. Even if you have severe end-stage knee arthritis, you can still help decrease the pain in your knee and improve its function. So one way is to massage. Get some lotion or a sports cream as I like, and you massage your leg. Massage the outside of your thigh. Massage your quad muscle. Massage behind your knee. Massage the tendon under your knee, and then take your hand in this kind of a horseshoe Put it around your kneecap and move it side to side, like wiggle in and out like this. It's a great thing. Now I have someone, this one's for you, Milton, who came in for the other knee. He was having pain with swimming and doing his activities, but I measured the, the knee that he didn't have trouble with and he barely could bend it. So I was trying to stretch it this way just to have him do some heel slides like this to get the knee range of motion. When you have arthritis, you need to flush the fluid through your joint spaces. That's why motion is lotion. Move your knee before you get up to walk if you have a sniffed knee. And also, you can stretch your quads. So I had him lay face down, and I, had, I helped him to bend his knee this way. Now, he could only get about this far, but he didn't have knee pain. He just had thigh pain. So in stretching out his thigh, the muscle that you massage, he gained so much range of motion. And he came in last week and said, Thank you so much, both my knees are feeling better. So I want you to know that you can still help your knee even if you have severe knee arthritis. You can still turn your foot straight going up and down stairs. You can still strengthen your hip to support the femur, that thigh bone, so it's not twisting at your knee. Enjoy. All right, so let's wrap it up. Use these techniques, try them, massage your knee, press the back of your knee down, strengthen your hip and improve your mechanics. I hope this helps. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Christine Linders. This is Movement Matters. Aloha, everyone.